simplifying positive exponents. Okay, we're going to start off with a quick review of exponents, um, just evaluating. So in this first problem, we have 2 to the third power. The 3 here is our exponent. That just means to take 2 times 2 times 2. So we're going to multiply the base, 2, by itself 3 times. That gives us 8. In your calculator, you'll have an exponent button. Ask your teacher if you need help finding it. But you can always just put in your calculator 2 to the third, and you will get out 8, as opposed to multiplying 2 together 3 times. This next one I want you to go ahead and try in your calculator. If you put 3 to the 0, you're going to get out 1. We'll learn about 0 later. It's a special case. In this next one, um, if you compare the last two, one of them has parentheses, this one with the negative 5, and the negative 4 doesn't have parentheses. If we were to put this in our calculator, it would make a difference whether there's parentheses or not. So if you ever see parentheses, you need to make sure that you enter those in your calculator as well. What they mean is whether you are, you are putting that negative to your exponent or not. So in the negative 4 to the third, the only thing that I'm doing to the third power is the 4. So it's like I leave my negative there, and I do 4 times 4 times 4, so I get negative 64. As opposed to, in this next one, negative 5 squared, I'm doing negative 5 times negative 5. I'm bringing the negative with the 5 instead of just leaving it out front. So this one is going to be 25. If you're not careful about those parentheses, your answer may come out with the wrong sign, whether that's positive or negative. Okay, what I'd like you to do here is, as I go through each of the rows here, pause your video and copy it down. So right now I want you to pause your, vid your video and copy down all of the first row. Okay, so our first rule here is going to be multiplication. The rule statement is x to the a times x to the b equals x to the a plus b. So anytime we have common bases, that's what our x's are, they're bases, anytime those are the same, we just take the exponents and we add them. So in this example over here, I have 5 to the 3rd times 5 to the 7th. The base is the same, so I'm going to rewrite the base, and I'm just going to add the exponents. 3 plus 7. So we get 5 to the 10th power. So that's how I'd simplify that. Now pause your video and copy down the next row. This row is power to a power. Our statement of our rule is x to the a to the b. So here, if you have this going on, you multiply your two exponents together, your a and your b. Notice there's parentheses in this one. A lot of people get the multiplication and the power to a power mixed up, so make sure you notice differences with parentheses. So in our example, m to the fourth squared, we're going to have m to the four times two, so m to the eight. Go ahead and pause your video and copy down the next line. Okay, on this next line, we have power outside of parentheses. So notice we have parentheses and a power outside of it. What we're going to do is we're going to take this power outside, this a, and we are going to multiply it by each power on the inside. In this example here, in the rule statement, each of those powers are 1. Whenever you don't have a power there, it's just going to be a 1. So here we get x to the a, y to the a. In my example over here, I have an x squared and a y. That y doesn't currently have an exponent, but we're just going to put an exponent of 1 on there. Just like if you didn't have a coefficient in front of a variable, you'd put a 1 there. Same thing with exponents. So here we're going to take 5 times each exponent here. We get x to the 10th and y to the 5th. Pause your video and copy down the division line. Okay, with division, what we're doing is we're going to have x to the a over x to the b. That's equal to x to the a minus b. So here we're subtracting our exponents. And I'll explain a little bit why that is. So in our example, we know that our answer is going to be r to the fifth, but let me show you why that's the case. So if I were to expand this, if I were to have r eight times on the top and then r three times on the bottom, the reason I'm putting 8 and 3 is because it has an exponent of 8, which means take r times itself 8 times. And r to the third means take r times itself 3 times. Now, if I cancel things out that are common on the top and the bottom, so r, 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 r. If I cancel all those out, 
what I'm left with is one, two, three, four, five R's on the top and nothing on the bottom. So that's R to the fifth. So that's a little bit of a background reason of why you subtract there. Okay, pause your video and copy down the next line. Power outside of parentheses. This is just like the multiplication one except for here we have division going on. So same idea, this A you're going to distribute to each of the exponents on the inside. So in our rule statement we have x to the 1 and y to the 1. Distribute the A to each of them, it becomes x to the A over y to the A. Now for our example, my N doesn't currently have an exponent so I'm going to put a 1. And I'm going to take 5 times each of the exponents. I'll get m to the 15 over n to the 5. Now I can't simplify this like we did up here with division because I don't have common bases. One base is m, the other base is n. So make sure you don't try and simplify things that don't have common bases. And then our last one is zero exponents. Anything to the zero is one. Anything at all to the zero is just going to be one. Okay, we're going to start with zero exponents here. I have five r to the zero. Now notice these parentheses. It means take zero times each of your exponents on the inside. So I'm going to get five to the zero and r to the zero. Well, that's just one. We could have just jumped from the very beginning saying we had some quantity to the zero. It has to be one. My next example, the only thing to the zero is this b right here, b to the zero. So this is the only thing that's going to become one. Since there's other stuff around, my answer isn't just going to be one, so I'm just going to consider this to have canceled out. I'm left with d to the fifth h. For the multiplication problem, we have x to the fifth times x to the seventh times x. Now this last x doesn't have an exponent on it, so we need to go ahead and put a 1 on there. And if you recall for your rule, here we're just adding up all the exponents. So 5 plus 7 is 12, plus 1 is 13. So we get x to the 13. Likewise with your 9 to the 3rd and 9 squared, we're just going to add our exponents and we're going to get 9 to the 5th. Okay, here we have power to a power, and if you look back up at your rules, here we're multiplying. So I'm going to do 4 times 8. Done. Next one we have 5 times 30, so we have r to the 150. Now this next one, you have something in here, some quantity, all to the 0. Right away we can just say that's 1. If you wanted to, we could multiply these and say, okay, this is a to the 0, well, then that's just 1, or you can just jump straight to saying it's 1. Power of a product. So now we have multiple bases in our parentheses. In this first example, I have an x and a y, so I have two bases in here. I'm going to take this 5, and I'm going to multiply it by every exponent in there. So I get x to the 10, y to the 15. Same thing on the next one. Um, I have a base of 2 and a base of x. My 2 doesn't have an exponent, so I need to put a 1 on there. So don't just think about the letters needing exponents. The coefficients out front need exponents as well. So here I have 2 to the third, x to the 15. We can keep going a little bit more with this one because we know that 2 to the third is 8. And with this last one, we have x to the fifth times x on the inside. I'm going to put a 1 on here. Let's take one step first. Before we deal with the 9, let's simplify the inside. So if you had just this, think about what rule you would use to combine those. It would be the very first rule that we went over. It would be adding those. So 5 plus 1 is 6. So see how I simplified the inside there? Now I can say, okay, 6 times 9, that's 54. Division of common bases. Okay, first problem we have is x to the fifth over x to the third. If you look back at your notes, whenever we have division, we're subtracting. So this is going to be x squared. 5 minus 3 is 2. So x squared. 
On the next problem, we have x's and y's going on. So we just want to look at one of them first. And I always go in alphabetical order. So I'm going to look at the x's first. So x to the squared over x. Well, we'll put a 1 with the lonely x. 2 minus 1 is 1, so we just have x. If you want to put x to the first, you can, but it's also fine to just put x. Now we'll look at our y's. We have y to the 9 and y to the 3rd. That's going to subtract to be y to the 6th. Okay, and this next one looks like we have, I think this should be a 9. I think it's a 9 in your notes. Um, we have n's, p's, and r's. So let's start with n's first. So I have n to the 5th on top, n to the 3rd on bottom. So I'm just looking at these two. It's going to be 5 minus 3, so we get n squared. Next, if we look at the p's, I have p to the 9 over p to the 9. That is just going to be p to the 0, because 9 minus 9 is 0. And then the r's, there's, n there's no other r here to combine it with, so I'm just going to leave r to the 19th. Now, if you notice, we have something to the 0, so this needs to cancel out because it just goes to 1. Our final answer is n squared r to the 19th. and power of a fraction. Okay, for this one we need to take our power and we're going to distribute it to everything on the inside. So I'll put an exponent of 1 with this 1. So we'll do 5 times 1 and 5 times 7. So on the top we have 1 to the 5th, on the bottom we have p to the 35th. 1 to the 5th, 1 times itself, however many times you want to, is always going to be 1. So this is 1 over p to the 35th. Okay, we'll go to the right next. So here we have x to the third, y to the fifth in the parentheses. We're going to take the two and distribute it to each of the exponents. We get x to the sixth over y to the tenth. We can't simplify that any further because they have different bases. One of our exponents has a base of x and the other one has a base of y. So you can't go any further than this. And with our last problem, here we have three bases. We have an x, a y, and a z. The x and the y both need exponents of 1. And we're going to take this 6 times every exponent in here, which is three different exponents. So we get x to the 6th, y to the 6th, z to the 12th. 